Okay, so some more internal compositing using the cloud reference I have. I'm going to go to this big one. I'm just going to keep selecting around. I'm using my lasso. I do have to be careful with the lasso because it makes pretty hard edge selections. I'm duplicating from it turning off the layer behind and then rotating using control T and stretching so what's unnatural about my creature is this kind of column for the legs right clouds don't usually have like peer, uh, columns coming out of them so I can soften those a little bit by compositing cloud texture over the top and then with my eraser just kind of slowly revealing and now I'm going to take the opacity down on my eraser to about 50 percent so I'm leaving little traces of cloud behind And even though we're compositing with photos of clouds and other people's pixels, we are taking more control of them than we ever have, really turning them into our own thing. There's no way any photographer of clouds would be able to say, oh, that's my cloud they're using. Because with internal compositing, we're just using little parts of it. We're dodging it, we're warping it, we're erasing from it, putting it where we want, we're painting with it. The thing where you select certain clouds with a magic wand and then paste them through, I don't, I'm kind of struggling. To me, I feel like I'm just doing it randomly. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just doing it from the cloud sources that I, I found, right? Because it's what you do with them. It's not so much that you found the perfect picture of a cloud to use. So I want you to have practice just turning it into what you want. And what you described, I'll just do it again, you know, lassoing around some cloud parts, duplicating it onto a new layer, moving it into its place, stretching it, These same old skills over and over again. This is called internal compositing. Because digital art gives us perfect du duplicates. And because clouds are soft, they can handle a lot of distortion and just work as a texture. Which is why we use them so often as texture fills. But you want to be careful, like I have to right now, to erase away from any hard edges that your lasso leaves. So I go to 100% opacity on my eraser, but I keep the eraser at 0% uh, hardness. And you see how it's softening up my cloud, making it a lot more believable. And I can always go find another cloud as well. But this is doing a lot of my work for me. And I can keep internal compositing. Okay, so the one thing that really isn't working yet is that bottom claw. So I'm going to grab this little tuft of cloud duplicate that onto its own notice how many layers i have because when you internally composite you create a lot of your own layers i'm going to move this down it's like having a big clump of cotton candy from my palette that i get to smear around and place just how i want 
I can warp it and stretch it. And then I need to get rid of those hard edges. And some of you are really going to take to this assignment. Some students always do. It's always a little surprising, I think, to them <laughs> that they enjoy it. And then some of you are just going to hate it. Even if you have loved compositing so far, you're going to hate having to work within the vocabulary of clouds, right? It's just not your thing because you're not able to go really bold, really colorful. And I'm going to make the decision now of going to my base layer creature, right, and erasing away from it. Because I'm not a slave to that silhouette, to that shape. I just wanted to suggest my creature. So instead of having really defined fingers, right, I just want to have little hints of cloud there. See, these fingers are a little too defined. So I'm going to bite away at those a little bit. I just want to suggest them. Same thing with the back leg. In order for the cloud to be suggestive, I don't even need to have it all connect, right? I can poke holes in it, and our eye through Gestalt theory will kind of connect the dots. But I do want to be careful of hard edges that are left. So this might be where I use my auto select with my move tool to find what cloud that is that still has a hard edge. There it is. And then I go in with my eraser, and I can knock it back. Okay, so now I'm going to teach you some new tools. And this new tool is called the smudge tool. And it does a lot of the same thing that erasing with a soft edged eraser does. It will soften edges, but an eraser can only take away, right? The smudge tool can move stuff around, which can be very helpful. So let's take this little cloud bit here that I composited for kind of the lower hand. And this edge here, which looks a little bit hard, even though it's faint, I don't want to bite that away, but I need it to soften out. So where is the smudge tool? It is right above dodge and burn. So the first option is the Blur tool, which is honestly not my favorite. Because what it will do is it will just um, kind of soften the focus of pixels where they are. So that can work. That takes out kind of some of my hard edge. But if I want to move it and actually have kind of control of it, instead of just blurring it, I want to go down to the bottom of that tool drawer and go to the smudge tool. Now the smudge tool is like a little finger that moves things along. Just like if you were to smudge your charcoal drawing with your finger. And the strength of 50 is about right. The brush, I want hardness of zero. And I want big enough to see. Okay, now I'm going to smudge and move. So click and move. And this is just like wind pulling on your cloud. It will push its edges in different directions along with how you press it. And as it goes, it will soften it out. Now, some people use this way too much and it just looks like a smudgy mess. But but it can be very helpful when used kind of deliberately where you need it. So 
I can just take this raw reference that's pretty sharp still and use the smudge tool. And make it look a lot more believable around my creature. This is fine tuning. And I'm gonna go go ahead and be crazy with it, go really big. So I'm gonna erase a lot of this layer anyway. And just show you how strong this smudge tool is. It's like a force of nature pushing on your clouds. It's like you're blowing with God's breath. I'm only doing it on kind of select layers. It's a little hard to control because it is so strong. So I'm doing a lot of Command Z, letting the computer catch up. Good, now I'm going to erase away from it. I'm going to use a really big eraser. Now I'm that whole layer. This is just kind of soft cloud stuff now, and I need to address the top of the head. So I'm going to internally composite with that. And I'm going to do a little trick of making multiple duplicates to thicken that up again. So you see all those copies. I made eight copies of that same layer. I can hold down shift and then I can merge them all. Layer, merge. So I, I broke it down and then I built it up. And now in just one layer, I can erase away from it again. Because it's all soft still, I have a slightly low opacity brush. Then I can duplicate that layer, more internal compositing. And I can stretch it to somewhere else. Right there is helpful. And then erase away from that pretty confidently. Or warp it. So hopefully you're having some fun with this or getting frustrated in the kind of way that really teaches you something about the tools. That is the goal. You're gonna be turning it in pretty soon. And of course, just like any assignment, this can be improved with more time, more investment. And then you have a magic tool, just like you did for assignment two in your creature. We can always use a clone stamp layer to fix any little, little areas that are problematic, right? So this is how I'll use the clone stamp layer. I make a new layer on top of all my cloud reference. I'm trying to transform a layer and move it, but when I do it, it just moves the um the little 